Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com. A few days ago, I posted, to which Glenn replied, so today, I'm going to show you how you can use contact as an external instrument. It's a really good starting place for building sets inside contact. So let's have a look at how that's done. We're going to start uh, by going ahead and opening contact. Now, we want to do this outside of Ableton because if we do it in Ableton, things are going to get a little funky with the routing. So right now, you see I have all of this set up, but I'm going to just pretend that... Um, those are not set up, so you may open it up and have it look something like this. But if you click up here on this guy and choose outputs, you'll see your outputs. Now, this is how contact is going to send audio out. Um, so we want to make sure we have quite a few of these. And if you click on this plus, um, it's going to give you some options for creating outputs. Now, I am going to create eight outputs, stereo. And then I'm just going to click delete existing channels. And this is so everybody's up to speed with me. I'm creating a brand new set of channels. And I'm going to click OK. Boom. So now you'll see I've got these eight channels here. Now we need to tell them where to go. So if you click down here, you'll see that this pops up. And I'm just going to send these guys out to their corresponding numbers. So stereo output 1 will be to 1 and 2. This will be to three and four. This will be to five and six. And this will be to seven and eight. Now, one last thing before we leave contact, which is if you go to this drop down menu here, you want to save this current output as um, the default for your VST plugin. And the reason that we do this is so that when we open it up inside Ableton, it's automatically set up this way. So now we'll go ahead and quit contact. And let's open up Ableton. All right, so we've arrived in Ableton. Now we don't need these audio tracks, so I'm going to delete them. I'm going to add a couple more MIDI tracks. Now our first one is going to be where we will drop contact. So we'll go into plugins, VSTs, and we'll just find our contact. And drop this in. And you'll see this is the same setup that we had before. Now, it doesn't really matter which instruments you choose. I'm going to just pick a couple that will work. So we're going to pull the giant in. And you can just shrink this for now by clicking that minus. Um, and then let's look for a pad, which, uh, let's see, there's some good ones in retro machines. So we'll do chroma pad. And then let's do one more. Perhaps we'll do a base. All right. So now that we've got these instruments pulled up here, we need to tell contact where to take MIDI from and where to send it to. So the giant is receiving MIDI on channel one, which we'll need to remember that in a second. But our output right now is going to channel one and two. And I actually don't want that. I want it to come out of three and four. And the reason for that is that if I set it for one and two, it's going to come out of the channel strip it's in. And I actually want to separate out all of the audio. So we'll pull that down, expand this guy. We'll put this to stereo three, minimize that. And then we'll pull this guy to stereo four. Okay, we can pull this out for now. So let's just label these to start. We'll do giant, pad, bass. Now we're gonna go ahead and add an external instrument to each of these slots, because this is how we are going to control contact. We can go ahead and turn MIDI from to no input. Now in the giant here, let's send MIDI to oop, contact channel one, and we're going to take it from channel two. So now this is receiving audio from contact. And you'll notice if I open contact up right now, the giant is receiving MIDI and sending audio out to three and four, but it's not actually passing out of the channel strip that it's on. Now we can do the same for the pad by changing MIDI two to contact two and pulling it from three. So now, when I turn this guy monitor in, I pass. And we can do
do the same for our bass sound by sending this to three and this to four. And now these are easily manipulatable inside Ableton. So if you want to have your filters on your pad channel, you can totally do that. You can change these sounds any way you want. And if you're trying to edit something, you can do it all from in one contact window, which is a really nice option to have. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest happenings at livekeyboardist.com. And I will see you back next week.